Hey everybody, let's look, take a look at uh, scientific notation today. Um, scientific notation is widely used in oh, things like biology, chemistry, and uh, all kinds of scientific uh, disciplines. Uh, the idea behind it is to simplify the way really gigantic numbers are written or really tiny numbers are written. I mean, you might have something like, uh, oh, the distance, I don't know, from one star to another, or I don't know, hold on, it's something like this, or whatever. Maybe that's just the number of uh, disgusting bacteria on your tongue at any one time, or whatever. I mean, you look at a book like like it has this, and like, oh my goodness, I mean, I, this is, it's too, it's, it's too confusing, or, I mean, you can see how giant it is, but if you're trying to work with those numbers, it gets to be too confusing and too likely that you're going to make a mistake counting all those zeros. Okay, to avoid that, we'll talk about that in a second, but you could even have something like this on the opposite idea. I mean, look at this. I don't know, something like that, okay? And that's the length of a bacterium or something like that, still sitting on your tongue at any one time. Okay, but again, you can see, visualize how small that is, but try working with those numbers. You know, oh, I want to multiply this by this, like, oh, how many zeros? Plus, you're looking at a biology book or a chemistry book, nobody wants to look at a number that long, taking up the whole, you know, one, uh, one line. That's ridiculous. So, what we've had to do is basically come up with a way where we can simplify this. And actually, if by simplifying this and making it into a certain format, it makes it way easier to mess with these numbers, uh, even just on paper. In fact, uh, I know a number of homeschool students that have been through chemistry classes uh, or biology classes after they've done Saxon math, and the other kids are sitting there punching buttons and going, oh, no, I can't be. And they, they just go, boop, 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 and they, I got it. And there's the answer right there. So you can do it on paper. Very handy look, uh, way to do that. Let's look at how this one looks. This is, um, you know, this is how it looks. X times 10 to the n power. That's what scientific notation looks like. Now this number, you need to make sure this number, it is between one and 10. Between one and 10, it cannot be 10, although it can be one. Okay, so you'll have a number like 1.6 times 10 to the fifth power. You'll have 9.8 times, you know, 10 to the negative 12th power or something like that. And you'll kind of get the hang of this pretty soon. It's a neat method of how this works. But in other words, you're looking at a number. Instead of having 9 and then 86 zeros underneath there, think about all those bacteria sitting on your tongue right now. Go brush your teeth. Not enough after that. Okay, it's way easier to go, okay, this is a number between 1 and 10, including 1, and this times 10 to the... Power, whatever that is. I mean, you know, you know how to, you know, you know, ten to the second power, that's a hundred. You know, ten to the third power, it's a thousand, and so on. In other words, all this two means is how many zeros with, are, are in there. So, ten to the second power is one hundred two zeros. Ten to the third power, a thousand with three zeros, and on and on. Okay. But what you're going to do is you're going to write it to where this is between one and ten, and this is ten to the power. And we'll talk about how to do that in a second. Okay. So let's look at it. So copy this down. It's 0 .000316, write that in scientific notation. Now, this is a very small number, right? It could be the length of a really giant bacterium hanging off your tongue right now. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is, we know that this x times 10 to the whatever, that's the way we want it to look. This x is supposed to be between 1 and 10, right? Including 1. It ain't. That is not between 1 and 10. So we're going to have to move this decimal to a point where our new number is between 1 and 10. And in this set I hear, if you moved it all around, you could do 0 0.3, 3.16, 31.6, 316, and your answer is you're going to move it right there because 3.16 is the only way you can move that decimal so where the new first part of it is between 1 and 10. Of course, 3.16 is, all right? Now we're going to go times 10 to the power, okay? There is a trick. If you want to do it, feel free. If you move a decimal point to the right, essentially what you have done is you've multiplied by, t in other words, you have 0.3 and you went, oh, I'm going I'm to move this to the right. You've multiplied by 10, right? Because if you change 0.3 into 3, you've multiplied by 10. If you take a 7, you multiply that by 10 and move the decimal from here to here, that's a 70 and you've multiplied by 10. What you've done here is you've gone, I've multiplied by 10 
in other words, 10 to the 1 power, 10 to the second power, 10 to the third power, and 10 to the fourth power. Okay? All right? You don't just go around announcing, oh, this is my new number. No, because you've multiplied that by, you know, that's 10,000. You've multiplied that by. So what we're going to do is take this 10, and originally everything's 10 to the 0, if you want to think of it that way, if you have nothing else. You can go, okay, well, this won't be 10 to the 4th power. In other words, we've multiplied this by 10,000, all right? What we're going to have to do on this side is to undo that. So we're going to undo the 10 to the 4th power over here by multiplying this to 10 to the negative 4th power. And that's your final answer. This is what you would put at. Now, you wouldn't write 3.16 times 10 to the 4th power, because 10 to the 4th power is 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. 3 times 10,000 is like, this would be 31,600. That is not, this number, original number, is not 31,600. Just one way to kind of like clue yourself in and remind yourself, oh, this can't be 10 to the 4th power, that'd be giant. The second thing is, when you see numbers that have a negative exponent, that's a tip-off that the number is going to be a very small number. So if you have, you know, 8.1 times 10 to the you know, 65th or something, humongous number with a ton of zeros. If you have 8.1 times 10 to the negative 65th, that's going to be a number with .0000 and tons of those and a very small number. Okay, Not like the number of bacteria that are crawling inside your mouth right now. Okay, All right, let's try another one. Now, this is the same problem, except that what they have done is they have added times 10 to the negative 7th power. All right? Well, again, what we're going to do is we're going to say there's a part and there's a part. Okay? We have to adjust this part so it looks like a number between 1 and 10. We already know that this thing goes over 4 times, right? So let's just make this thing look new. 3.16. Okay? Now we're going to have to make this part look new. Okay? Well, what we did on this side is we multiplied by 10 to the 4th power. So what we're going to have to do on this side is we're going to have to, if you want to call it, uh, you can call it two things. You can say, we're going to undo this by dividing by 10 to the 4th power, because then we'd be multiplying, multiplying the entire thing by 1, right? 10 to the 4th divided by 10 to the 4th is just 1. Okay. Or what you could say is, I'm going to undo 10 to the 4th by going 10 to the negative 4th on this side. So if you want to, you can look at this and go, okay, I'm just going to multiply 10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the negative 4th. Now you already know how to do this, right? X times, you know, I don't know, to the, X to the 5th power and then X to the negative, you know, I don't know, uh, 12th or something like that. Well, you know what to do. You just go, that's X to the 5 plus negative 12, which is negative 7. Same exact thing here. 10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the negative 4th is 10 to the negative 7 plus negative 4, which is negative 11. And there we go. That's all you got. All right. Let's look at this one. Same exact problem. What's the difference? You tell me. Yeah, it's 10 to the positive, positive 7, right? Okay. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to have to take, again, every, every number in scientific notation has a hunk here, and it has a hunk right there. All right? We've got to adjust this one way. We have to undo it. We have to balance it out, in other words. If we do something to this side, we've got to balance it out by what we do to that side. Okay? So we already know this thing goes over four times, right? So we have 3.16. In other words, we multiply this by 10 to the fourth power. Well, to undo that on this side, we're going to have to divide by 10 to the fourth power. Now this, again, you can either say, I'm going to, do the, I'm going to undo that by going, I'm going to divide by 10 to the fourth power. Or, you can say, that's 10 to the 7th times 10 to the negative 4th to undo that positive 4 over here. Okay? Either way, look at this. 10 to the 7th times 10 to the negative 4th. Well, what is 7 plus negative 4? 3, right? Okay, there it is. Or, you can look at this. Look at that. If you have 10 to the 7th power divided by 10 to the 4th power, well, you know how to do that, right? I mean, you, anytime we've done these, we've, uh, like, x to the 10th divided by x to the, I don't know, third. Well, we know, we just go, oh, we just subtract. 10 minus 3 is 7. There it is, okay? Same thing here. 7 minus 4 is 3, and that is 
our new way of writing in scientific notation. Okay. All right. Try these three. You know what? Pause it. Pause it. Copy these down. Try all three of them. Come back when you're done with A, B, and C. Okay, well, A has nothing except no, you know, tenant of anything power over here. So we're there, the decimal is right here. We're going to have to move this thing over all the way that way to make it a number between 1 and 10, right? Well, if you want to imagine this, you can always do this. You can say, oh, this is 10, excuse me, multiplied by 10 to the 0 power. Well, anything to the 0 power, remember, is just 1, right? Okay, you can visualize that if you want to. Since you went four times to make this 4.78, in other words, you divided, you divided by 10 to the fourth power, okay? Well, if you divided by 10 to the fourth power over here, you're going to undo that by multiplying to the 10 to the fourth power over here, okay? So you will write this in scientific notation by going, oop, that's 10 to the fourth power. There we go. Okay, B. Same thing, you move it over four times, which means you are dividing by 10 to the fourth. That's 4.78. If you are dividing by 10 to the fourth, you're going to have to undo that by multiplying by 10 to the fourth. Okay? 10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the positive 4 is negative 7 plus 4 or negative 3. All right? Last one, same thing, you move it over four times. 4.78, you are still dividing by 10 to the fourth power. In other words, the decimal is going over to the left four times. All right? Well, if the decimal is going over to the left four times on this part, then the decimal is going over to the right on this part, right? Okay. So it's the same thing as going, okay, I'm going to multiply this by a number going to the right four times. All right, so this will be 10 to the seventh power times 10 to the fourth power. Well, 10 to the seventh times 10 to the fourth is 10 to the 11th. There we go. That's it. Okay. All right, try the practice problems. There are three of them. Give them a shot. Try A first. Pause it. Okay, A is 4.99. You need to move that decimal over times 10 to the fourth power. Okay, pause it and try B. All right, B is 4.99 times 10 to the negative 7th power. If you didn't understand why that is, try it one more time. Look at your decimals. Count those things. Understand what you're doing. Go back to the original uh, pay, or previous page to help you. Okay, pause it and try C. Okay, last one will be 4.99 times 10 to the negative 1 power. Okay. All right. See you next time. Have a good day.